gaze at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. You weren't here to hear the remix oh. guitar solo that I was playing of the theme song. Absolutely glorious. Um, wonderful. I'll tell you what, man. Butchhead. Butchhead be jealous of that guitar solo. Oh, 100%. And the fact that I did it all with my mouth. <laughs> Even more Linguistic impressive. Linguistic skills. I mean, it's Just don't ask me to sing because that, that's not going to be good. No, that's what I'm here for. That's a vocal. I, pr- I provide the vocal. Spotty. Yeah. Spotty to say the least. But vocals nonetheless. Yeah, let's say that our speaking voice is a lot better than our actual singing voice. Accurate. Um, and some people would argue that they're not, that's not even that. <laughs> the speaking voices aren't that great. They can argue all they want. Well, not even 2,000 other people disagree. It's true. 2,000 plus <laughs> members of the Cutback crew would say... It's enough on Twitter to start a movement, right? <laughs> apparently, yeah. Apparently that's enough on Twitter to start a movement. Yeah. Indeed. But look, we got tons of great topics Right? I mean, you can see them. They're, they're glorious. So make sure you hit yeah. the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and that notification bell. And uh, head on over to the Cutback Shop as well. Cut, co- cop yourself. Catch yourself. Cop yourself some merch. You could catch like George Kittle and uh, block, run, catch, and fear nothing. <laughs> uh, like the People's Tight End who had himself a great couple weeks since he's been back. So make sure you head over there as well. There's a lot of great stuff there. And you can rep that stuff at the Grand yeah. Canyon. David Campbell at the Grand Canyon with his uh, 40 freaking Niners t-shirt. I love it's it. It's a great t-shirt. That's absolutely, it's just mwah, it's yeah, fantastic. What's more grand than the 40 freaking Niners, Niners shirt at, at the Grand Canyon? At the Grand Canyon. At, uh, not much. I can't think of anything else other than the, the glorious win we had Monday night. That was grand. That, that was pretty grand. That was grand. Uh, but look, we got to start with some, uh, not technically, at this point in time, at this very moment that this video is coming out, it's not breaking news, but it, but it broke. It broke, right? It, it broke. Drake Kirkpatrick has officially been waived. And while a lot of people are talking about, you know, him just being waived and all the stuff and, you know, there may be a special big yikes that comes out this week that addresses some things. And I saw a couple of people calling him a, a bum, a, a bum. And that's why he was waived. And uh, I think you and I believe that that is not the case Ant, as to why Drake or Patrick is, has been officially waived from this football team. Um, what do you make of the news? And then what are your feelings as to why that is? Let's get into a conversation on this. First off. Um, you wave Drake or Patrick at this point because you believe that the two young guys that you've had on the roster are now able to handle that situation of a oh backup God. corner. Oh my gosh, no way. Right. That's number one. Number two, you've been carrying extra corners this whole time because you couldn't have um, Dion Lenore or Ombre Thomas go to a practice squad or be cut. So you've been ha- you've been holding them out while they've been preparing. You've been carrying an extra guy on your 53-man roster. So now that those guys are able to handle that situation, you go ahead and you move on from veteran Drake or Patrick. You appreciate what he did for the team. He had one really good game, a couple of spotty games, um, but he did get us through one. So maybe he got us helped us get a victory in the in a game. So whatever. Um, but what I'll say is is Josh Norman is has secured himself as a starter, and now we have two young guys that are there to back up. We got uh, Johnson, Dante Johnson, that can play in the slot if needed, and he's also a very talented special teams guy. So um, it was time to move on for Drake or Patrick. That is good news. That means the 49ers coaching staff can still develop people in practice and they don't have to have game reps to get better. Game <laughs> reps, Ant? Game reps? Not yeah. that big of a deal. I have a feeling, Ant, that game reps are going to come back around. We're starting the episode with game reps and maybe we're going to be finishing yeah. with conversations about game reps. Mostly because people don't understand that reps are, are reps. Um, one rep is actually not more important than, than the other rep. Um, but hey, you know what? It, it's fine. As long it's, as it's a full it's speed rep, yeah, it doesn't matter. Accurate. Full speed reps are what matters, uh, and executing full speed during those reps is the most important 100%. thing. 100%. Uh, quality over quantity, Ant, is, is the thing that matters most. And no, uh, game reps are not more quality reps than practice reps. They can be exactly the same because a game, the only thing that differs is that the score actually matters and counts. Um, but what you're seeing, what you're facing, the disguise, and all those things can differ from situation yeah. to situation. And your point is accurate. I, I cannot stress that enough. Your point about the two young guys now being ready is why you make this move. And I see a, a lot of people already talking about how this means that Diamador Lenore, they finally trust him. No, I, I think this means that they are comfortable with both Diamador Lenore and where Aubrey Thomas is now that if Aubrey Thomas gets into a situation where they have to put him into a game, 
they're comfortable. They're comf- They're as comfortable with him as they are with Drake Kirkpatrick. I think that's a big, huge thing. I think that's a big, not not a red flag, but a huge positive sign in terms of where he is and where his development is right now, as well as Diamandu Lenores. This is a positive thing for San Francisco. Uh, but Ant, it's almost as if good things come to those who can wait, right? That patience is not only a virtue, Ant, but positive things can come from being patient not putting people in situations where maybe they're not as comfortable with or maybe they could struggle or get exposed and allowing them time to behind the scenes develop, grow, foster, nurture that development and make sure it happens in a positive manner, in a positive, safe place that is practice where with you, when you make mistakes, you know what? You make mistakes, you get ripped, you can learn from them and it doesn't negatively impact your team on the field. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, 100%, you know, things happen in practice all the time and, and guys can improve and guys can get better. And we saw flashes of Diomedor Lenore early on in the season. And if he would have played this entire time, he would have had struggles. And he would have had, you know, times that he got beat and he would have hurt this football team a little bit. It's not that he wasn't playing well, because he was. But he wasn't playing at the level that someone like Josh Norman is, because Norman understands all the things that he needs to do out there. Does he sometimes get, you know, hot-headed and, and do things that are maybe a little bit out of line? Yeah, but think about the game he got out of line in. Who was the who was the guys in the back end that were the leader? He was the leader at that point because the other guys in the back end weren't there. Jimmy Ward wasn't there. Jaquiski Tart. You didn't see that happen from Norman when they were there. As soon as Jimmy Ward comes back, Norman is back in check, back where he's supposed to be. Leadership is a real thing, and Jimmy Ward is a real leader in the back end of that defense, and we needed that. Um, Jason Verrett was the other guy that was his running mate, and Verrett's out. So you see what happens when leadership is on the field and they can play. Um, then you just got a bunch of dogs out there getting it done. So I like Josh Norman's aggressiveness. True. I know he's going to get beat. I know he's going to make mistakes. Um, but Jimmy Ward's going to keep him in check as far as the mental thing. Because it, it was Tavon Wilson going up and telling him that he needed to settle down in that game. That would have been Jimmy Ward. You know what he would have done? He would have settled down. Um, so it's just it's a it's a different kind of you know thing to work through. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think this you and I both feel this is great news for San Francisco. This waving is sad for Kirkpatrick. And I hate to see depth go, uh, but you were carrying seven seven corners. I love it. I love the fact that these two young guys are ready to go. Um, that, that's good. I mean, we always wanted these guys to be able to go because their their ceiling is higher than Drake or Patrick's ceiling. Uh, so you're going to get to the point now where these guys can come in and execute, and the 49ers feel their better options. Uh, that's that's great for the 49ers. Overall, that means Definitely our depth bad. just got a lot better because we got two guys now that they feel are as good as Drake or Patrick, and before that, they, we didn't have either one of them. So um, improvement for the 49ers defense, improvement for that depth. Absolutely. It's huge. Um, but from that and the Kirkpatrick's, the waving of Kirkpatrick, now we got to move on to some injury updates and what's been going on with a few of these guys. First and foremost, one that is a fairly big one is Elijah Mitchell dealing with a fracture on his finger, on his hand. He's getting a pin. He had a pin put in. We don't know which hand. We don't know which finger. And we don't know because <laughs> Kyle didn't bother to ask because for Kyle Shanahan, and this is a non-factor for him. Right. He was already talking about how he, you know, there he's he's just waiting to find out if Basically, Elijah Mitchell can practice today. So that'll be a sign of kind of where he's at within his process. Obviously, I don't think Kyle's too worried about this. I feel like they can wrap this thing up, club it up a little bit, protect this guy. Uh, obviously, probably won't be as much of a pass catching option out of the backfield. Uh, but that I mean, shouldn't affect his ability to run the football. As someone that's had finger problems, I had a broken thumb. I've had a torn True. ligament in my pinky. Um, it, it can cause a little bit of issues, but there's a thing called tape. And Ooh, if you dang. tape it to another finger, oh, hot dog. Uh, I know it's a little bit harder with a thumb, but if you tape it to another finger, you can still use that hand pretty good. Um, all you have to do is be able to take the pain, you put a splint on it, and you're good to go. And I love what Kyle said, too, about um, you know, which hand is it. It doesn't matter. He usually uses both. Uh, I like that. <laughs> it, it's, it's a good point, right? You're, you're going to, in certain situations you're running through, you're going to use both. You can protect with both. Um, so if he gets near you know, guys, he'll be able to hold on to with both hands. So. Uh, I'm not too worried about this. In fact, in the game, I know you want it in certain arms, depending on where you're going to the outside, you know, outside of the right, one in the right arm, outside of the left to the left. But running through the line of scrimmage, you usually have two ends on it anyways, and you don't pull it until you get, you know, you break through the line of scrimmage, you get through that second level. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. But if it is going to be a deal, right, you just make sure that in that situation, if you broke a finger on your right hand, you carry it in your left hand when you get through. Um, it, it is it is something they can get through. So I am optimistic about Elijah Mitchell being able to play against the Jaguars. Uh, Definitely. And Kyle's optimistic. The training staff seems to be optimistic. So while this is a blow in terms of him being 100% healthy, um, we've been saying this for quite some time now. Uh, You don't make it through an NFL season 100%. No one does. No. Everyone gets dinged up. Everyone gets banged up. Just be happy it's a finger, folks. Be happy Well, this is a finger injury. We've got to expect that. We, We wanted them to run the ball 44 times. We wanted 40 rushes. That's what everyone wanted. You know what you got? 44 44 rushes. rushes. And you got 
A finger injury. I mean, if you come away with a one finger injury out of 44 <laughs> rushes, it. it's one heck of a day. It's all great. Um, the, the other interesting uh, comments were about Elijah Mitchell's size and the fact Kyle said he's basically the same size as Trey Sermon. He just doesn't look as big. I thought that was interesting that they, they view Elijah Mitchell as a power back as well, that he has that power to be able to finish. He runs like um, it. Not good news for Trey Sermon. No, if you're no. if you're on the I'm a power back thing, so we're gonna have thunder and lightning one day, and then Kyle's like, "Well, Elijah Mitchell's kind of thunder and lightning. Basically, he's, he's the both. whole he's the whole storm. He's a whole kitten caboodle." Um, Trey. So this whole this, this this comment, this is an interesting comment from Kyle Shanahan, and it brings yeah. up an interesting dynamic. If he views him as both thunder and lightning, and he can utilize them in similar ways, does this mean that Kyle Shanahan wants? Elijah Mitchell to be the one B to Raheem Mostert's one A next, next year. year. Maybe. I, I mean, I think they got some interesting questions with Raheem Mostert because he's been hurt for two years. Absolutely. Um, and you saw what they just decided with Jalen Hurd. Like, hey, at some point, if you're injured too much, you're gone. Mm -hmm. um, they, they have had to make that decision. They weren't doing that early, but that is a decision they've decided to make over the last offseason and now. And I think that this is going to be interesting with Raheem Mostert. Now, Mostert, if he will take less money, he's so dynamic, you probably take a chance on him. Is there a chance that Raheem Mostert's sitting there going, you know what, I haven't been healthy. I haven't proven it. I haven't been available to this football team. Give me the minimum. Give me a heavily incentive-laden contract, and let's roll. Let's roll one year and see what happens. He doesn't say that. His agent doesn't say that because that's just bad business. I agree with um, you. But I think he'd be willing or more willing to do that. You know what I mean? A lower base salary and then and take some incentives, some escalations, 100%. But I think the 49ers would love to roll next season with Mitchell, Sermon, uh, you, Mostert, and, and Jeff Wilson Jr. Okay, I was going to say, you, you included Mostert and Jeff Wilson yeah, Jr. Yeah, I, I think you're going those four guys. I think they would love for that that running back room to look like that. If they could get Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr. to the right contract, if they can't, they would. I think they would honestly bring back Wilson Jr. before they bring back Mostert, Mostert for money reasons. Because well, money and... and right well, now, guess, you can... Elijah that. Mitchell and, and, and Wilson Jr. are almost like... Uh, duplicates, right? You can almost get them in the same situation. Except Elijah Mitchell has a little bit more speed, but they both can finish the runs. They have good vision. They can run inside. They can run outside. Um, so to me, they can both play on third down. Yep. You, so you don't lose a lot. So it last you saw it on the on the game on Monday night. It was like boom, boom, boom. Um, the way they were able to handle and it. No, nothing changed. Seamless. I mean, it's yeah, seamless. Yeah. It, it was truly seamless. Um, and the best part was this too: is they were able to get uh Jeff Wilson in and put him in wings wing spots where he's playing almost a Kyle Uzcheck role. He's flying through and smashing people. Well, it's getting the personnel grouping because mm -hmm. they see the running back. They just don't expect that running back to end up being Debo Samuel. Um, so when you line him out there, you're going to get the uh, different alignment also from the de the defensive backs and the linebackers because they have to adjust to a running back being up here in the flat and a wide receiver being in the I, backfield. I think one of the hardest things about last night Aunt, was watching Debo Samuel doing all, all that, knowing full well that Kyle Shanahan envisioned that role to also be a little bit of Jalen Hurd. Oh, 100%. He expected Jalen Hurd to take some of the pressure off the running back stuff was supposed to be heard, um, but it's not. And you know what? Debo Samuel is a fantastic player. He's, He's able to incredible. handle it in a big way. Absolutely his vision is, is unbelievable. Uh, I can't believe he didn't play running back in college. That's how good his vision is. Uh, it, it's excellent. So, yeah, Debo Samuel the, is the taking off. The fact that he wasn't his, utilized in that way to that extent at South Carolina is absolutely incredible. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just shocked the NFL has finally realized who he is. After one game on Monday Night Football, all of a sudden ESPN is like, Oh my gosh, Debo! Hey, no one's giving this guy any credit. Like he's, he's the best. He's the best weapon in the NFL. No, no duh. No crap. We saw it all all two year. What have you all been two watching? Two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, we saw these flashes and these glimpses. Like, man, this guy's just special. He's good. He's just special. Yeah. Uh, glad the rest of the world, I, I guess, is on the same page the as NFL's us. NFL's got nineteen problems, and all of them are Debo. Yeah, one hundred percent. All of them are Debo. Uh, but then there's got some other issues going on as well. I tell you, while Debo Samuel is calling, pro causing problems for the league, which is great for the 49ers and great for Debo Samuel, especially since uh, he's got a contract coming up. Uh, Jalen Moore started the game at right tackle. That was nice to see, but exited the game fairly early at right tackle, and Tom Compton took over. Updates on this and where Jalen Moore is at. What have you heard, and uh, are you concerned? Uh, I heard that it was no structural damage, well, and that's kind of the hint on you know the knee. Um, that, that was what it was hinted. I mean, you see him on the on the bike. Uh, if you think someone has structural damage, not they're the not out there on the bike. Not, not on the bike. Um, that's not good. So I that's, that's actually the last place. To be right. Going. I thought it was some a muscle or something like that, and it's it's probably going to end up being some sort of a you know a knee sprain or you know something of that nature, or even a hyperextension, something like that. Um, we'll see what they end up saying it is, but that's a good sign. Now we'll just see it, you know what the timetable is for him to be back. 
Hopefully it was nothing serious and he's going to be able to play this week. He's going to be available. If not, we'll roll with Tom Compton. But I, I would much rather see what Jalen Moore can do for a full game. I was super geeked to see him out there. I would have loved to have seen multiple reps from him because, um, you know, I wanted to see him against Donald. I wanted to see him against that, you know, formidable pass rush, how he could handle it because I wanted to get a glimpse of the future. Um, luckily, we, we were able to get it done with Tom Compton. And if, if Tom Compton's asked to win again um, next week, hopefully he can. He's going to need to. I mean, he's definitely going to get tested. They have some pass rushes over there with Jacksonville and the Urban Grinders. So definitely uh, be ready to grind yourself, uh, Mr. Tom Compton, if that's the case. Uh, but Jalen Moore hopefully will be A-OK. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see what his status is throughout the week. Um, they're not 100% sure yet. Um, Kyle also talked about yesterday Josh Norman kind of being limited this week due to the ribs the still. Rib still yeah. so they're going to protect him. And Debo Samuel came out of the game with a shin contusion. I'm stunned, Ant, because of all the running and catching and other things that he was asked to do that he came away with a little bit of a nick there. Uh, but we all know that as long as nothing yeah. happens throughout the week, Debo Samuel is going to be good to go, son- yeah, uh, good to go Sunday. Yeah, shin contusions don't feel good. Um, no, they suck. But they're they're completely normal. I mean, he'll ice it and he'll take care of it and he'll be good to go on Sunday. That's not even no problem there. Yeah, agreed. Which is awesome because he's about to go over a thousand yards on the season against Jacksonville. Twenty one yards away. Yeah, he's gonna go well over. He might even catch Cooper Cup. Who knows? Uh let's do it. Yeah, let's 100%. do it all in one game. Let's do it all in one game, Duval. Debo. Duval, he, he, Debo's coming for you. The 49ers offense is coming for you. Ant. Snatch your chain. Uh, they're going to snatch your chain, <laughs> Ant. But you know what else? This has been a, a guy who's been reaching for the brass ring the last few we- weeks, Ant, talking about snatching chains and snatching things and opportunities. Uh, the Jimmy G narrative for quite some time now has been the dude can't throw the ball downfield. He has no air yards. Um, he just checks down. That's all he does. He's Jimmy check down. That, that's all he is. He can't throw deep. Um, he doesn't complete passes. You know, he's not consistent. Um, he's just a he's just not a good quarterback. Uh, but you have some some interesting information yeah. on Jimmy Garoppolo over the last three weeks that may uh, finally be debunking this narrative once and for all. A narrative that we didn't necessarily buy. And Jimmy obviously has limitations. I'm not sitting here saying Jimmy G is a Hall of Famer. Or Jimmy G is the best quarterback in the league. Right. But Jimmy G has been a solid quarterback in San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan as the head coach. He he has played at a very very good level, top fifteen in the league level quarterback you know, at middle to average quarterback in the league. Um, what are these numbers that you've seen over the last three weeks? And uh, yeah. how do you feel it may debunk this narrative if if it even does? Yeah, so let's go through this. Number one, in, in week, starting in week eight, um, since then, he's throwing 96% of the time out of the shotgun. Um, that is tremendous. I mean, that is a different, you know, part of Kyle Shanahan's game because Kyle normally would run the play action. So I think that is big. The fact that he's doing that. And his passer rating is 109.8% over those three weeks. 1.9 or 109.8. That is impressive. That's solid. Yeah. And then pass per attempts, 9.5 yards per attempt. Leads the league. (laughs) Leads the league. This is the check down guy. He leads the league. And he's also, Alex, in this game against the Rams, 77% on third down. That was his completion percentage. Solid. That is fantastic. Well, and think about it. How many passes did he throw? What, 13, 15 passes? No, he, throw, he ended up throwing like 18 or 19 Okay, passes. so there's 18 or 19 yeah. passes, 77% on third downs. Early in that game, most of his throws were on third downs. I he mean, has he was, to win on third down the way their player playing the offensive well, sets. And this yeah. is what I mean. A lot of people were like, you can't give Jimmy G any credit for this win. Really? You can't? When the Niners needed to extend right. drives and make plays on third downs, and they would throw the football through, through two touchdown passes. Yeah, uh, th- that, that would be a reason enough for me. <laughs> But when you when you do that as a quarterback, when you're only throwing the ball on downs and distances, when the defense knows that you're throwing the football is going to be coming after you, and you're completing those passes, extending drives, throwing touchdown passes, by by definition, you definitely helped the team win the foot. You you can argue he wasn't the only. You're correct. He's not the only reason, but he's a main reason. He's a uh, an important cog in the wheel of success for Monday night from the Monday night win. Yeah. Like Jimmy Garoppolo did everything he needed to do for the 49ers to win games, complete passes on third down, the fourth and five touchdown to Debo, the, the touchdown pass into the end George zone Kittle. to George Kittle, which was absolutely phenomenal. Like all of those things, that Oscaring, Oscaring plays, getting them running the ball to one side of the field, flipping the formation and running downhill the other way like for positive yards. Oscaring. I mean, that's what he called it. He Oscar, Oscar. You're flipping flip. it from one side to the other. Yeah. Uh, he, I saw him can some stuff as well. I mean, Jim, Jimmy operated and executed the offense the way it needs to be done, and the offense executed on top of that. Those are 
positive things for the 49 these these aren't negative things these are the things that we saw yeah. from jimmy garoppolo when he first got here that made everyone love him and now you have him doing these things ant and it's not okay um yeah if this was aaron Rodgers that had this game you know through 189 yards and two touchdowns everyone would be like masterful performance aaron doing what aaron needed to do efficient um the winning the football game deadly it, it's that's what it that's all that matters it, it doesn't matter if he needs to throw for over 300 yards he's proven over the last three weeks he can throw for 300 yards this week he proved that he could manage the game and he could get the touchdowns when he needs to he can convert you know third down after third down when he was asked fourth down you know quarterback sneak no problem do the, these they can you, handle it if you're a 49ers fan right now the last three weeks should tell you a few things number one this team is capable yeah i know you have the arizona cardinals loss and people want to be like, oh, it was absolutely embarrassing it was a tr terrible performance it, it was but it wasn't as bad as people think because the, the turnovers earlier what put the 49ers in that position and what makes that game so ugly you don't turn the football over game goes completely differently yeah you go from two turnovers that week to no turnovers this week you show that you can take care of the football okay so you don't have to worry about those things being a consistent problem for the 49ers point of emphasis for the guys all week at practices make sure you secure the football and then you go on and take care of business on sundays when you're supposed to or mondays if you're playing mondays or thursday nights if you're playing thursdays whatever day it falls on um so th this team though has showed Week in and week out that they can do those things. Jimmy Garoppolo can be the guy you need him to be on a week in, week out basis. Doesn't matter what version you need. You need a Jimmy Garoppolo that hands the ball off and throws the ball nine times like you saw against the Packers. And that's that's who that's who will show up. You, you need a guy to throw for 300 plus yards. Okay, I can be that guy. I can show up and keep us in football games or help us win games. Mm -hmm. He can do that. Uh, if you're the 49ers, this is a win-win because you're winning. You've won two of your last three. Jimmy Garoppolo is showing he's everything the team needs him to be when they need him to be it. And he's doing it at a high level. Right. This is elevating his stock. For all you Trey stands out there right now, all you guys who are like big Trey guys and looking forward to next year with when Trey takes over, this is a huge positive thing for the 49ers because if Jimmy keeps doing this and this team keeps winning and you get into the playoffs, Washington football team, Houston Texans, Miami Dolphins, all these teams are sitting there Cleveland going, Browns. Cleveland Browns, all these teams are sitting here going, we're a quarterback away, we feel, from being a successful football team. Look at this dude. You guys want to move off of him? Yeah. Here you go. Have a second. Have two seconds. Yeah. Have a second and a fourth. Have a one team may be desperate enough and to go, hey, San Francisco, you know, we traded last year. We got we got your first. You guys want that you guys want that first round pick back? We'll give you your, your first back for Jimmy Garoppolo. That's pretty gangsta. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that either. <laughs> but this is just elevating yeah. his stock. His value yeah. is is going up currently. And all these people talking about how his value was never going to be higher than those first two games of the season after those first two wins. Wrong. Right. Wrong. It was way too oh, early in the season to, it, to make those comments. If he if he leads this team to the playoffs, 100%, they're going to they're gonna look back at week eight when he took a stranglehold of that team in, in his hometown and absolutely turn this thing around. Um, his play has not been an issue since week eight. No. His is not the issue. That's not the reason they lost the Arizona game. He played fine. Um, did he have misses? Of course, every quarterback has misses. Uh, but he's not the issue. And you're right. If he keeps playing, his stock is going to go up, and it's going to continue to go up, and they're going to have some trade value there. Um, but really what it comes down to for me is it puts the 49ers in a situation to win games. Oh. And I want the 49ers to win games and make the playoffs. How dare you? I, I want them to win because, you know what, I, I'm a fan. I want them to be do really well. And right now, Jimmy Garoppolo is the best option for that. And like we said before, at some point, Trey Lance will be that best option. Today is not that day. Um, but when it is, Kyle will go to him because you know what Kyle wants to do more than anything? Win a championship. And if he believes Trey gives him the best opportunity, he's going to play Trey. If he believes Jimmy gives him the best opportunity, he's going to play Jimmy. If he believes it's himself, he's going to sign himself up and go in and play quarterback. Um, that's just what he is. You know, it's true. For all the people that are saying he's egotistical, um, yeah, he might be. And if he is, he's going to want to play the best guy so he can win. And he would love for it to be the guy he picked to be right. So uh, at some point it's going to happen right now, though. Jimmy Garoppolo is playing at a high clip. I love the way he operated the offense and got everyone in alignment. Um, and they executed at a high level. And that's why they won the game. True. It's 100% why they won the game. Jimmy Garoppolo has been a catalyst in wins the last three weeks since they've come back from the bye. He has not been a hindrance. No. Um, oh, excuse no, me. No, no, no. Well, let's, let me let me I guess technically paraphrase because that uh, Colts game was not a great performance from, from Jimmy coming out of that bye week. The, the rain, but right. Every game after that, I would game, say since the Bears, since he went home. Correct. Since the Bears game, he has been the guy that we all 
well, most 49ers fans knew and love back when we first acquired him in 2017. I would say it's pretty close to 2019. Definitely. I mean, yeah. Definitely at this point in time, and the 49ers having success. Shocking. Yeah, they won two of the last three. What a surprise. Uh, but from Jimmy Garoppolo, you have to go and flip and talk about Trey Lance most of the time. You, you do anyway, because you can't talk about one without talking about the other. Yeah. Um, and Kyle had comments this week because people asked. People asked about Trey yet again because it'll never stop. It'll never end until Trey actually takes the field for the very first time as the official starting quarterback for the 49ers long term, not for a game, not because a guy's not available, um, but because he is that guy. He is that dude. And Kyle had some interesting comments, some interesting things to say about Trey and just what's been going on there. Um, he talked a little bit about, you know, uh, basically people were asking and reporters were asking him why Trey hasn't been getting snaps, why he hasn't been going and getting even one snap. He hasn't taken one snap in the last three weeks. Um, and Kyle talked a little bit about how, you know, the Bears game was a choice, a conscious choice to not put him on the field because of the knee stuff. Uh, and the other two games, the situations just haven't come up. But more questions were asked and people dug a little bit deeper and we're asking, you know, about his understanding of the playbook and whether or not he grasped it fully and, and all of these things. And Kyle had some interesting comments and remarks. What did you take from Kyle's comments on Trey? Where is it making, where is it leading you to think Kyle is with Trey? And does it surprise you Kyle's assessment of where Trey's at? No, it doesn't surprise me. And, and first off, what he was saying was, that you know he had an understanding of the offense now he has the full offense understood like he knows the plays this is not confusing to me and you but this is somehow confusing to the reporters they believe that once you have an understanding of this offense you should be able to go operate it at a high level that is not the case people you they can to... they're conflating knowing the play but right. like like right like when i when when the verbiage is given to me and i call it out that that means I know exactly where everyone's going to be. I know all the routes, right, on the field. So then, therefore, because I know all the routes and the protection, the base protection, that means I'm good to go. I can operate it. And yeah. what you and I are saying is that is just an understanding of the playbook. That's not able to. That's not being able to operate the playbook or operate the play correctly or diagnose. Right. What they're doing is there are people that have read a book in their past, and then they go take a multiple choice test, and they're like, well, I knew all the answers. Um, yeah, he might know the answers, but the thing is variables change, right? Those those change during the, it's not like a normal test. You have to be able to pick up blitzes, recognize where it's coming from, go through your progressions, know how your receivers are going to adjust routes by the covers that you're going to see. So the implementation of said playbook after you understand it is, is the most important thing. So just because Trey Lance understands the playbook, it doesn't mean he's able to implement it yet. And it also doesn't mean that he's ready to play yet. And by Kyle Shanahan saying he needs reps, it does not mean that he needs game reps, even though that is what's being attributed to it. What it means is he needs those reps to continue to learn those things. And the thing about practice that is different than a game is in a game situation, you can't dictate certain situations. so You can't practice certain things. In a practice setting, you can go ahead and structure practice to make Trey see certain things that he needs to get better at. You can structure it to develop his skills. That's why practice reps can be sometimes a lot more beneficial than game reps. Because in the Arizona game, for instance, he's running for his life. At what point was that good reps for him? Terrible, actually. Uh, right. And so what Terrible. I'm saying is you got to get this guy in those situations, and that's what they're doing right now. They're having him learn. So now we, we know he has a base understanding of the offense. He knows what he's what, what plays are going to happen. He knows the verbiage. But now he's got to go implement it. He's got to go be able to handle it with moving parts. And so far it appears Kyle Shannon is saying, yes, he understands, but he's not there yet. He doesn't have the full grasp like Jimmy Garoppolo does. And that's fair. And you, you and I both are, have been in this boat for, for some time now that – you know, until Trey is fully ready. And this isn't the media's narrative of fully ready, meaning he knows all the routes. He understands yeah. the verbiage. He can go into the huddle and call the play without having to go to the headset and go, hey, guys, can you say that again one more time? Because yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Hey, give me like a month to learn that playbook, and I'll be able to go in there and tell you where everyone's going to be and what the verbiage oh, is. Oh, 100%. Can I go execute it? Absolutely not. Hell I don't have no. those skills. Heck um, no. But I'm just saying, it's like to actually learn it, a lot of people can learn that that playbook. It just being able to actually operate at a high level is a different category. Oh, you and I both know if you, if Kyle Shanahan sat us down in a room and said, here you go, here's the playbook. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys start going through it. Um, well, you especially know. if you give me like Rich Gangarello and Jimmy Garoppolo to help. Oh, if I get learn. to, yeah, if I get to watch film with everybody, oh, break it. down, you know, yeah. understand call schemes, verbi, like, like, oh yeah, we'll, we figure it out. Most people could. Well, I mean, most people could. And, yeah. um, but you and I would figure it out. I think we, I, I would be hard pressed to believe that we wouldn't figure it out quicker than, than some, but definitely not quicker than most. Yeah. Uh, but here's the thing. There's a difference. Like you just talked about, there is a vast difference 
between knowing something and implementing something or knowing something and executing something. Mm -hmm. And we've been saying this about this team, that they haven't been executing. Well, all of the guys that are on the field, they know the plays. They understand scheme. They understand coverage. And they're still struggling to execute consistently. What do you think is going to happen with Trey? Honestly, putting him out there, throwing him out into the fire in a complex offense is not a positive thing for Trey Lance. It is a negative. Um, and it's a negative for him and it's a negative for the team. Because when guys are wide open and not getting the football, those guys aren't coming back to the huddle and being like, consistently, hey man, it's, it's hey, you'll, hey, no worries, you'll figure it out. I mean, if this was a week in, week out thing every single week where Trey was going out there, dropping back 30 times, you know, completing 20 passes and missing bad on 10 of them to guys who are wide open for a huge plays, after about three or four weeks, guys are going to be like, dude, bro. How many times are we going to do this? How many times are you going to miss me when you, you should know the coverage and understand it by now? And there will be positive strides. There will be things that he picks up with those game reps. But there's going to be a lot of things that he misses. And the more shots you take, the more gun shy you start getting, the more quicker you are to pull down and come off of those reads. You know, Kyle, what Kyle's talking about here is this is a guy who understands the basics. He understands the playbook. He understands base protection, base scheme. He understands where he's supposed to go with the football and what he's supposed to be targeting. But you know what he can't do right now is go, this is the coverage. This is where the blitz is coming from. You know, this is what the, the scheme is. And because of this, I know my primary is this. Well, because of what they're showing me and where the pressure is coming from, and my primary now should be this. Or being able to go, my primary's here. Oh, they're taking this away. Okay, this guy's a guy coming down. I need to go here now. Mm -hmm. Like he, he doesn't understand the, those intricacies of the offense yet and and he shouldn't he, he shouldn't no. understand those things right now right he's a rookie and he's a 21 year he's a young a yeah. young rookie he's not supposed right. to understand this yet and, and game reps are not always important for him to perform because he does go through the game plan process right he understands what they're going to be implementing and running mm -hmm. so then when they go over film but he they're going over the film and they're saying here was the play he has a complete understanding of what that play was he knows what everyone's doing now we can look at all the receivers what they did and where jimmy went with the football if jimmy moved a guy here or there that's the learning process he's learning from jimmy garoppolo's reps he doesn't actually have to physically be doing them because he's doing all the mental stuff during the week and then going out there and watching the, and then and then watching in the film room. The game is 90% mental anyway. And, and 40% physical. Absolutely. According to the Little Giants, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Little, little he's Giants. He's 80% mental, 40% physical. 100%, 120%. That's how it works. Uh, but, wait, what? <laughs> I, wait, huh? Uh, but this is this is what I mean. Like, the, the mental... Knowing what you're supposed to do or where you're supposed to go or where you're supposed to be is more than half the battle in the NFL. Oh, 100%. Also, Alex, because then you don't think. When you're not thinking, you're just going through it reactionary. Um, that is when you second, move fast. Second nature. Yeah, you, you. That's when you actually do it fast. That's what we've been talking about with Talano Ufanga. At first, he was thinking. Um, now he's starting to operate where he's just going off instinct. And once he does, he's getting there just in time. Before that, he was a step slow. Um, that's what it's about. And it's no different from a quarterback. Or he's a either. step. Or he was a step early, right? Because he's guessing. <laughs> he's guessing about where he is, and he's guessing about things, and he gets there just a little too early. Yeah. But it's because he's thinking about it, and he's telling himself it's it's here it's here go now go now and he's not trusting what his eyes are telling him and reacting um you know that that's half the problem with with athletes is getting to a point where you're so comfortable with something you've done something enough you've seen something enough that you can just not let yourself do things without thinking about it. you just naturally react and respond this is what trey's trying to develop and and i hate to break it to people but half of uh, the biggest portion of that is the mental portion oh yeah, trusting what you're seeing with your eyes and then letting your body do those things in order for that to be the case you have to see it you have to know it and you have to trust it you don't need to be on a field to do those things that that can be on film no that's the last part of it mm -hmm. the last part of it is getting that fluidity the, with the, the wide execution. receivers the execution of getting it there um but the first part is knowing where everyone's going to be at a certain a certain time a certain situation and when you do then then your body can take over and you can get right. there um, but that's all stuff that they can continue to work on during the off season. So, and during practice when they're getting some reps. Oh my goodness gracious! Aunt. Who would have thunk it? Practice actually has a purpose. Yeah. Um. You know, pr practice can can sometimes well not sometimes a good chunk of the time 
have a lasting effects in development. Well, it worked for Ombre Thomas and Diablo Lenore, apparently. Uh, and Talanoa Hufanga, apparently. But, you know, I, yeah. I guess... Even Aziz got better all these years when he didn't have reps. Man, that's crazy. I mean, uh, I'm stunned. Demetrius fighting in fools, not so much. <laughs> Just kidding. He's gotten better on special teams. <laughs> <laughs> Ant, you are not wrong, my guy. You are not wrong at all. Cutback crew, let us know what you thought about all of this down below in the comment section. Right this moment. You excited about the possibilities with Ombre Thomas and, and uh, Diamondo Lenore being ready? Are you worried about Elijah Mitchell, Jalen Moore? Are you finally on board that the Jimmy G narrative has been bunk and that this guy can get it done for this team? Or it's Trey's time he needs to be playing and you don't care what that egotistical narcissist Kyle Shanahan has to say, Trey Lance needs to be on the football field. And if you're that person leaving that comment down below, you can almost bet you might be on our special edition of Big Yikes this week. Maybe. Maybe. If we do it. Or at least you'll have some initials, T-A-F, um, typed close to your name. Um, yeah, that's an interesting take at this point. I, I'm, I'm wondering how... I get that people want to see Trey Lance play, uh, but you know, after hearing all Kyle Shanahan's you know, remarks, if you still think Trey Lance is a better option than Jimmy Garoppolo right now... And if you think it's a good situation to put the rookie out there before he is ready to go, uh, I think we saw some major holes when he played against Arizona. We saw that he improved a lot since training camp, absolutely, which means practice reps are working. Oh, um, but uh, he, he's going to develop throughout the year. And at some point, he's going to be ready to take over. I still think it's going to be next year because I think the 49ers are going to make a push and go to the playoffs. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm one of the few that still believe that, Alex. Uh, I'm with you in that boat. Yeah. You and I are in that boat paddling I seen, it. I've seen some people jumping on. I like it. It's true. Hop on in. There's plenty of room. Yeah. Uh, the water's fine. You can, you can swim on over to the, the boat. It feels and, nice. And you can help us row. It'll be an easier time. We'll all have a lot of fun and we'll all be able to say, I told you so when the 49ers do in fact make the playoffs and everything's going well. Um, and maybe who knows, we'll see some of you at Levi's for some of those games yeah. or, you know, on the road, who knows? We'll, just, we'll see what happens. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but let us know about it all down below. And while you're down there commenting away, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell, do those three things and then hop over to discord so that we can have wonderful conversations with the cutback crew and us about your San Francisco 49ers and all of the positive things that are heading our way as we turn the tables flip over the the new leaf that is the second half of the season and turn our attention to jacksonville and those jaguars and the urban grinders yep it's time to take care of business and beat jacksonville it was a big victory for jimmy garoppolo against jacksonville that first year when he got traded here mm -hmm. um they really kind of put the foreigners on that you know mark and this could be another pivotal game the rams one is one that everyone's going to look back and say hey that was the launch part um but this one could be the one that gets them on the roll three out of four games and three out of four, four victories get the 49ers right back in the midst of it. And then a big, they're a big winner from Minnesota away from possibly being in the sixth seed in the playoffs. I mean, that's how quick things change in this NFC. Absolutely. The NFC has left the door wide open and it's time for the 49ers to kick that bad boy down and announce themselves to the rest of the NFC that they are here. I'm back. I'm back. We can Cam Just Newton in the end zone. The chain like Debo. Oh, that too. That, that too. Bust him with the chain. I'm backing everybody like Cam Newton did last week. Uh, and just announcing themselves to the rest of the league in the NFC that we're here to stay. We're ready to take this thing over. We're ready to do some damage. Just like the 49ers Cutback Channel is ready to do some damage all over the podcasting landscape on the 49ers. We'll see you on the next one. And until then, stay safe. Remember the right way is always, always the, the 49ers, 49ers way. way.